just when we think all of this bad weather's over, this happens. We are definitely a lot further than we have been before. Yeah, bubbles burst a little bit. Jarrah goes, oh, the autopilot's not working. Cool, that's, that's cooked. That's not coming back. It's time of death. <laughs> are you a bit excited? Are you a bit excited? <laughs> If you've missed part one of the journey so far, click on the link above to watch it. And suddenly, within one night, a Caribbean trade wind sailing leg is over. It's, uh, oh, sorry about the screen, I haven't cleaned it yet, nothing's dry out here, so I won't be long, but pretty much overnight. It's uh, a front that's kind of come through, and this, I think, is kind of marks the the point at which we're really unsure about the weather. There are a bit of, there are quite a few fronts coming through. Um, we're 10 days in, and we're about, I want to say, if we've estimated that our journey's 30 days, we're two thirds of the way in. We've just started our, our second leg. Uh, out of three. Uh, there were calms yesterday and like beautiful blue sky and calms and then overnight just the clouds have rolled in um, and then on, on Adam's shift at around one o'clock till about five o'clock it's, it just started getting darker and darker and the wind speeds picked up. We were trying to put a reef in, it was very hard, we were probably a bit too late for that too. I think Adam was trying to wait until the shift changed to put a reef in and it just meant that we were like 15 minutes late uh, to put a reef in which meant that it was really really hard. It's one of the hardest times that we've actually had out here trying to control the sails. Six o'clock in the morning now, Adam's, I've made Adam go downstairs to go and get some rest because someone needs to get some rest. <laughs> it's my shift now and uh, just watching and waiting to see if the wind keeps picking up again. beginning of the morning it has seriously settled down and remember I said uh, as I said finally uh, you know it doesn't really feel like we're in the Caribbean anymore and I was in like last night I had to get changed into full wet weather gear all days prior so for the whole nine days I've been in like shorts and a t-shirt for the most time like I've wrapped a kind of like a little fleecy blanket over me at night but that's kind of it and like a jumper um, but yesterday it was like full wet weather gear, it was raining inside, like into the cockpit. It was just miserable last night. It was horrible. And Adam's night nice shift changed. But throughout the last few hours, the blue skies have been coming back out a little bit. The clouds have been clearing and the weather is expected to drop off again. It's so frustrating. So a calm is expected to come along and, uh, and it looks like we might end up motoring tonight. So it's like literally one, one or the other. <laughs> we have like mad schools, freezing cold temperatures, freezing cold, cold temperatures, or motoring and cups. filling in today quite a bit and this is the beginning of the uncertainty for the next few days. I'm supposed to be asleep now and I've been up three times for three reefs in the last hour so we're sort of at the point now where we're both just really frustrated and tired. Just want to, I don't care whether we're doing four knots, I just want some stability in our lives. We're doing eight knots so just reef everything down, get the boat flat, get control of our world again if you will and uh, yeah settle in for the long haul really um, there's just no there's no benefit to carrying more canvas whatsoever and on top of that I've got an injury that's flaring up which is making me struggle to even hold this camera out at arm's length which is uh, a little bit concerning considering we have a week to go or more 
I think I'm gonna have to mummify my torso to give my back some support so that I can function, but we'll play it by ear. Not cool, man. Not cool. What's up? Day 11. Oh, oh no, I actually think it's day 14. What? No, day 12. 13? Bet you in the middle. We are about 500 miles out of the Azores, and honestly, Adam and I woke up this morning and we both said to each other, like, I think we should pull in, pull in at the Azores. And I'll tell you our reasons why. Adam's back has been really hurting him at the moment. Um, we've just had like crappy forecasts, but lots of fronts have been coming through. Um, it's been really uncomfortable. The wind's been switching like 90 degrees like we did yesterday. It switched 90 degrees, which meant we were battling into the swell that was suddenly we were going, like, that before we were going downwind on. On top of all that, our stasal winches have both decided to kind of pack it in a little bit. That one is definitely, this one's on its way out and it's soon becoming unusable which means that we have no stasis. So any of these fronts that are coming through, kind of like, wow, all right, we've suddenly got one less sail and we're now a sloop, not a cutter. On top of that, on this side is also where our furling line is and we use that exact winch to fold things in. What we've been doing to kind of bypass that is like we've, we've reached something up, but it does still kind of catch a little bit and it's just not ideal. Back to our story, woke up today really thinking that we were like, you know what, maybe it's just time to go to the Azores, um, fix a few of these bugbears. But then we had a look at the latest weather forecast. And I tell you what, if I have not seen the most perfect run up to Iceland, like a 10 day run up to Iceland, I don't know, like it's literally textbook. So both Adam and I were like, oh, oh, the decision. We're just so exhausted. We just want to go to the resource and just, just put an anchor in and sleep and just deal with all this later. Just don't get a forecast like this very often, rarely. So we've made the decision to carry on. We're gonna truck through. We're gonna, for today. For today, Reserve for today, the right to right. change it. Yeah, Any exactly. Time. We'll keep on heading, uh, aiming a little bit more towards the Azores. Um, on the proviso that if we pull in, we pull in. Um, if we don't, we'll carry on going. But as of now, we're a sloop. As of now, we have to route our furling line somewhere else. Um, we're gonna keep being a leaky boat until we arrive. There's gonna be noises, but we have earbuds. We just have to cross our fingers and toes that the forecast that's coming means that we have, a, means that we'll be able to get a little more sleep and we um, might be able to keep on trucking through. It's daily logbook time from Adam at least. We've done 1,968 miles so far. I've been out here for 318 hours. That's insane when you say it like that. The end of the nasty slash really uncertain weather is ending today. We've had beautiful blue skies. I think, I'm hoping, that it'll kind of start to get a little more consistent now, the wind. It's porridge and sleeping bag weather. It's definitely getting colder out here. I'm starting to feel the lack of warm clothing that I have, although the wet weather gear or the fallies that I'm wearing help a lot. So sleeping bags out and doing watch uh, on here. I think it's about five o'clock in the morning and it's you can tell now behind me that it's been bright for like hours. So nowadays I wake up when the sun is up, like after the sun's up, and I go to sleep before the sun sets. So. I just don't really see a sunrise or a sunset. We are definitely 
a lot further than we have been before. Looks like it should be a nice day though. We are just pretty much carrying on, carrying on. At the moment the wind's kind of coming from beam, just behind the beam. So it's nice, nice um, conditions. Uh, you can see it's kind of like a few clouds in the sky, but mostly blue, so that's nice. It's like just a, I think it might just be a good sailing day, a consistent sailing day maybe. Another rainy day, just when we think all of this bad weather's over, this happens. I'll try and put more curtains up. Oh, it's coming in from behind. For the last three days we've been telling ourselves, today's the last day, after today things are going to get better, today's the last day. And then it's always just one more day. Just one more day. You check the, you check the new forecast in the evening, you're like, oh, yeah, maybe tonight it's actually going to get a little bit squirrely for a while. And then in the morning, it's sort of, it's, you're like, how was that? Oh, yeah, okay, today's the last day. And then you check it again. One more day. But I promise you, today's the last day. <laughs> this oh, is man. the last bit. Have a look at us. <laughs> oh, wet. This is couple wild of, weather. Couple of bobbleheads. I think you can tell that we're pretty, we're pretty relaxed around this kind of weather now because we've just been so used to it for the last five days. Yeah. Whereas if this were Caribbean, we would be like, sunny skies, sunny skies, like Looking 90, for somewhere to 99% pull in. of the time. And we'd see this and be like, wow, that's going to get hectic. Whereas now we're like, oh, my socks are getting washed. <laughs> yeah, fresh water, deck wash. Uh, what is the saying? Wind before rain. Let top sails fly again. Yeah. Uh, would you say that was wind before rain or rain before wind? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, this is I think that might. There's 27 knots. So 29, briefly. Among many other things that we've seen throughout this passage, we've definitely Rain. noticed that our boat is not waterproof. <laughs> I get that at all. This bimini is just doing nothing. <laughs> I think the Bimini might be a little bit uh, tired. Having fun down yeah. there? Oh yeah, it's lovely and dry now. Suffering, yeah. just yeah. the worst. Yeah. Thanks for being on watch. So, a bit of a problem. We have lost our Raymarine autopilot. Not the Hydrovane. Um, but we've been using the autopilot for the last few days since the weather's been pretty bad and we've been going downwind. Occasionally we just use them both at the same time. Just for the last few days we were just using uh, just the autopilot. It started getting beeping from the autopilot and uh, the, the warning on the screen just says off course or um, drive stopped. And I was like, well that's really strange. So I'd reset it um, and did that a few times and then eventually I was like, Adam, this like, can you come up here and like help me out with this? Like I have to hand steer because the autopilot isn't working. So he goes downstairs while I'm hand steering and literally the whole drive, the whole ram has just completely fallen, like the brackets that it's on has just completely cracked through. It's like a solid piece of stainless steel. Uh, yeah, that's the autopilot. That's the Raymarine autopilot. All I can say is thank God we also have the hydrogen which we should have seen. We really, really should have seen that. Um, there is no fixing that though when you're out here at sea. That's like a proper welding job, um, a fabrication job, that one. So Adam's just checking on our hydrogen, making sure that's in good, in good condition before we commit to what the hell we're doing now. Because right now we're down to one redundancy. So if the hydrogen goes, then we will be hand steering. We both don't want to commit to another 1500 miles of going up to Iceland if we can't confirm that it's in perfect order. So that's what we're doing now. Yeah, bubbles burst a little bit. We were like pulling out of the bat. Today was the last of the crap weather and we had a really positive outlook and everything was going really well. And then just I just came up from a snooze and Kiara goes, oh, the autopilot's not working. I lifted up the bed. Cool, that's, that's cooked. That's not coming back. It's time of death. Oh, I'm kicking myself. I should have... Oh. It's never given me a moment's concern. It never, it, like we've been in there doing other jobs all the time and I've looked at it and been like, yeah, it's fine. Anyway, it's done now. 
So we've lost the autopilot, and I've been saying for a while that the hydrovane's got like a clickety-click noise, so we're a little bit suspect on that. Not in the way it's functioning, but in the way that are, are we hurting it by using it. We've been so flush with power, we thought we would just sort of cycle between the two. Like, when it's smooth sailing and easy, we'll put the hydrovane on, and when it's wild, we'll let the autopilot take the heavy lifting. Now we've lost the autopilot, we are investigating the noise further in the hydrovane, still. I actually think I might have found it just now. Kiara is verifying my findings. But the question is, do we go to Pico, or just Pico, <laughs> do we go to Horta in the Azores and effect repairs there, or do we crack on for 10, 12 days with just the hydrovane? Unfortunately for us, we've passed, we've passed the Azores now and the forecast is kind of to windward. So like, if we wanted to go to the Azores, we would have sort of a beam reach for a day and then it'd be smashing into it for like three days. I don't know, we've got such a good run to Iceland and we've still got the hydrovane. Like, I'm trying not to be super conservative because I am a very risk averse person and it's not, you know, typically that keeps us out of trouble. But we've turned back other times when perhaps I wouldn't have and I'm trying not to like panic and turn back immediately and be like, oh, we've lost one system we must have bought everything and go straight to harbour. We've still got self-steering and if Kiara comes back and goes, yeah, I see what you're seeing, next calm day, I can go over the side and potentially fix it. The closer we get to Iceland, the better off, well, the easier it will be for us to hand steer into Iceland if it comes to that. So, I don't know, Kiara and I have to have a very long conversation when she comes back and uh, figure out what we're gonna do. The safe choice is to run for harbour, but if I did yeah. that, after the rest and after the repairs, I and everyone else would be justified in saying, well, why did you spend seven grand on a hydrovane? Yeah. If you're just gonna use yeah. your autopilot and run back to the Ford every time, you lose one of two. Oh, I hope I don't end up eating those words. Yeah. Well, just fingers crossing that there's gonna be no more schools tonight. Cause the sea state is really gross. I'm sure you can see the horizon behind us, which is like, just, oh, I feel like we're in a washing machine right now. It's a bit gross. And there's another one kind of potentially going overhead, so. It's been a very frontal couple of days. The yeah. last three, maybe four days have just been front, calm, front, calm, front, calm, and very little sunlight and a whole lot of rain. Yep. The, today is supposed to be the last of it. Like tomorrow morning it should improve and things should stabilize. We're both very ready for a couple of simple reaching yeah. days under a clear sky. <laughs> On the plus side, yeah. Adam's back is getting better though. So that's yeah. one good thing. I'm a bit more mobile now. Yes. Been o overdosing on Voltaren. Yeah. And I know we've chatted for so long. We finally hit 20,000 miles. What do we sales. get for a reward? I know, exactly. <laughs> I know, it feels really like, oh yeah, so we've met, hit this massive milestone and let's focus on something else. Cue the test. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I think it's a very, very, very amazing achievement. I'm very happy with us. And it's pretty cool that we're out here doing this, like right now while we've hit that milestone. So 20,000 miles sailed. Yep. Between, no, not between us. As Total. Like, in total. Each. Adam yeah. has a busy day today. He has decided to see whether he can fix the um, autopilot arm um, bracket thing. So he's in his business trousers, he's getting down to business, and he's gonna try and see whether we can get our autopilot back to working again through some dodgy hacks. I don't really know what he's planning, so he'll throw you in.
Yeah, okay, just give it 10 degrees right and then left. Just go to standby. Well, the makeshift bracket seems like it's gonna do the trick. The challenge now that I have to figure out is how to get the drive configured again. I feel like it's lost, it's lost the middle um, or directional awareness or something. Um, there was some damage to some of the wires which I've re-spliced together. Um, yeah, it's bracketed down but now the actual drive unit is being a bit strange and not functioning right. So I have to try and, I don't know, see if I can dig up a manual and maybe do like a, just a reset or a reconfig or something. And then maybe, maybe we can get it to work. I only really, like all I'm trying to achieve is just minimal use uh, for motoring, basically. I just want it to be like super gentle use, just flat, calm water, motor on just hold a heading doesn't have to do vein mode or comp compete with the sails or anything like that i just want to be able to motor with autopilot um, with a limited range of motion which i've achieved so far if i can get this drive unit to function and cooperate with the control head again so a bit annoying that like after all this fabrication it's not just like put it back on and it's all good hopefully i can figure out what's going on during the next period of calm Adam managed to find and fix the culprit for the knocking noise that our hydrobane was making. Thankfully, it was as simple as just tightening up a loose bolt, one that we'd missed when we were troubleshooting on anchor. And so, over the next few days, we continued on northward. Well, guys, we got through that grotty second section of the forecast, and now we're on to our final third. <laughs> Yes, uh, as you might be able to tell, it's getting significantly colder. <laughs> Are you a bit excited? Are you a bit excited? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> no motoring so far, and the wind is sort of... It, you remember a little while ago we were like, oh, we keep sort of saying it's just one more day of rainy crap. For the last three days we've been telling ourselves, today's the last day. The end of the nasty slash really uncertain weather is ending today. Today was the last of the crap weather. So after today things are going to get better. Today's the last day. Just when we think all of this bad weather's over, this happens. But today is supposed to be the last of it. Like tomorrow morning it should improve and things should stabilise. Yeah. Just one more day. Just How one long more did that day. last? And that lasted like three days, maybe more. Seven days, I'm going to say. Seven days. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. And now it seems like it's just one more day of breeze. Like just hang in there, just one more day. Just keep us just cruising like four knots, five knots. Just keep sailing, just one more day. And we've been doing that for two days now. Wind's starting to drop off. So we need to shake out a few reefs. time for a deck walk too. Oh, man, these lines just go everywhere though. <laughs> okay. like that. Adam's looking at me like, get back in their cockpit. <laughs> Oh, there, there's a big puff. I see the puffs. There's at least three. Oh, there he goes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know. There he goes. There's another one. Where are you? Close. That was really close. That was really, really close. Okay, I'll keep an eye out on the front. Yeah. You keep an eye out to the left. So we would just sort of <laughs> lay down, just looking out, and Kiara went, oh. And I looked to the left, I was like, holy. And we had just it was sort of back. Two, two boat lengths to the left was just this long, dark figure come up. <laughs> <and then. laughs> 
Oh, wow. Oh my God. Huh? Typical, you get the camera out, you're like, here, do it again, do it again, and then nothing. They get all camera shy and they go away. So then you hear like, I promise I saw something, everyone, I promise. How many hours of oil oh. footage? I know, I'm just, I, and because you, the, the boot up for the camera is not that fast, so you kind of have to just leave it running. So you end up with like a 30 minute clip of just the water lapping by. Oh. So the wind is starting to fail us. Uh, looks like we're going to begin the slow boat slash motoring section of the adventure. Um, my autopilot repair has been untested as of yet. Oh, I, I scratched that. I did test it. Um, I tested it the day I put it in, but I tested the arm of the autopilot just to see if it functioned because some of the wires got sort of chopped when it broke. And that's, it functioned, but it didn't function the way I thought it would in the sense that um, it sort of, it didn't behave the way you'd expect, you know, like take me to starboard, so it goes one way, take me to port, it goes the other. It was very confused and after some thought, I figured out that the reason it was doing that is because the feedback, the feedback, oh, the feedback loop was incomplete. The arm wasn't connected to the steering quadrant and thus not connected to the rudder sensor. And so when I say come up one degree or down one degree, it, puts in an, an input and then waits for a response and if it doesn't get a response it tries something else or it just generally just can't function. I have connected the autopilot and run it again with uh, with it connected to the quadrant and so it and it functioned. Thank you. Thank god it functioned. Um, so for now we have an autopilot again on extreme light duties. The repair is just an aluminium plate sort of lap joint thing uh, that I knocked up ironically out of a backing plate that Hydrovane sent us. So the autopilot fails, Hydrovane to the rescue, which has been steering steering us for two days, and I fixed the autopilot with a spare backing plate that Hydrovane sent me. So uh, good on you Hydrovane, <laughs> way to come through with the goods on all fronts. So yeah, we're on light duties for the autopilot, but for now, just motoring in a flat calm, it should be more than capable of just uh, keeping us, you know, on course. There was a little bit of motion in the plate. It's as you'll see, it's a lap joint and it's sort of not well supported. It's the best I can do, but it's not as strong as it probably should be. Hopefully it holds up. Um, and if it does break, I've, I've actually got a second plate, so I might even be able to rig up another repair depending on how it fails, if it fails, but it won't, it's gonna be great. <laughs> 